Hello everyone! Welcome back to Spiritual Essence and today I'm going to show you how to create your own blessed water. Now does it differ from holy water only in the sense of how it is prepared? So in here I have uh, it's a very nice glass that I got from a thrift store so I just decided to put it in here. You can put it in any container that you feel like. And the ingredients are as follows. Very simple. So you're going to want at least a teaspoon of salt. Uh, the most natural you can get, which, you know, sea salt or Himalayan salt, just a teaspoon. Uh, maybe about a wedge of lemon juice, you know, just squirt a wedge of lemon in there. And the water itself has to be at least... So there's a few kinds of water that you can use. You know, distilled water, uh, you know, filtered through like... Some people have the filtered water through the fridge. You can utilize that as well. Also, if you can somehow collect the rainwater or uh, snow, which uh, it's snowing in Michigan right now, so there's tons of snow available, that would also work. I have filtered water through the fridge, which will work just as fine. But um, you want a water with the least amount of impurities. Now, some people might say like the outside water might have the impurities, although it's been through the natural process of evaporation and condensation also it is filled with that energy from the elements. So that would give it a little extra charge, in my opinion. Um, but just for this video, I just use the filtered water. And you're gonna wanna mix that all in. Now once you do that, take it in your container, hold it in your hand. Place uh, your writing hand over the top. Close your eyes. Now, remember that episode where I taught you how to uh, take the energy from your heart and bring it out through your, like, your arms? If you're new here, um, go check that out. And you're going to want to uh, perform that technique, moving energy. And you are going to just imagine the most purest form of energy coming through and going into the water. Um feelings of purity and cleanliness and just positive energy um, if there's any other positive uh, affirmations or energy that you want to add do so you can even say a prayer over it um, let me see the mother goddess of my choice is the Celtic mother goddess Stanu so I think I'm going to do this in her honor. <clears throat> okay. Goddess Danu, I ask you to help me bless this here charged water. Help give it strength and elemental energy, as well as the power to purify, sanctify, and cleanse of all negative energies, and along with it to cleanse myself in the process. Thank you, so mote it be. Now, during that process, you might feel like a light electrical feeling going through your hands, and then you might feel a little bit in the water itself. Now, if you feel that, perfect. That is exactly what we want. Now, you successfully made your own blessed water or holy water. Now, how does this differ from, uh, you know, holy water in the Christian faith? Well, we obviously did um, use the pagan god prayer, uh, when normally uh, holy water, of course, is strictly to Jesus. Um, I have also learned that in the church, there are different types of holy water for different uses. Some put sacred oils in there. Some put salt. Some put, like, blessed salt. And others put... Um, ashes from blessed incense and things like that and they're all to do different things like cleanse uh to sanctify 
So that kind of differs, but it's very similar. Now, uh, I believe that this is an ancient uh, Native American mixture that was used for cleansing objects and uh, ridding oneself and other objects of negative energy. So, now that we have created our cleansed water, what are the uses? Well, number one, like I said, cleansing. If there's an object in your house that you feel like, I don't know, is emitting some dark energies based on someone negative who touched it or something, uh, I'm going to take into account these scissors. So you're, I'm going to put it right here. So say these cigar, uh, bleh, scissors have some dark energy in them. You're going to just dip your hands in there and you're going to lightly go over all of it. You're going to just want to, you know, make sure that you get it all. And as you're doing this, just envision that all the dark energy is just being seeped out and just disappearing. Just add a little bit more. There we go. Now these scissors are fully cleansed. If you want to add like an additional prayer to them, your call. If you don't feel like that was enough, but uh, at least for something with just light energies, no big deal. Now it could also be used for cleansing the home. So um, if you wish to cleanse your home using blessed water, you're going to go to each room in the house and you're going to say a little affirmation or prayer. Depends on what you want. And don't just say the words. Feel them in your heart and soul. Feel them as you do them. Like, I'm going to give you an example. So you're going to go to each room in the house, every corner, well, all four corners of the room. You're going to dip your fingers in just a little bit and be like this. I hereby cleanse this area of all negative energies. Only positive and comforting energies can remain in this space. I hereby cleanse the sacred space. As I will it, so shall it be. Something of that effect. But make sure that you get the four corners of each room in your house. Even if there's like a room in your house that doesn't really have a lot of activity um, or doesn't really feel bad, just do it all. Because sometimes while you're doing this, negative energy can sometimes flee to other rooms. And that's why when you like smudge, it's always a good idea to open up all the windows. Not only will it release all the smoke, but it will also drive out the negative energies by, you know, pushing them out the window. You can uh, do the same if it's summertime, of course, but normally this should uh, extinguish, you know, negative energies that are there. It should relieve them. Uh, if it's something more powerful, however, this might only stop it for a little while or in some unfortunate cases when dealing with like demonic energies, it can actually make the situation worse. So, um... I would suggest that you understand and get some information on what spirit you're dealing with, if it's a spirit problem, before you start doing this. Just a word of warning. Um, another thing that you can do, so you're going to just dip like your thumb or something, and above each doorway you're going to put symbols of maybe like your religious beliefs or, you know, a symbol that makes you feel protected. Let's just say the cross, you know. Christian cross. There we go. We're going to take and just put right above the door. And you can um, line the tips of doors on the tops. You can line this with them. Um, above each doorway in the house, make little symbols. Uh, line your window sills with it as well. They also say you can do olive oil, which I have done too. <laughs> I'm showing you guys just for this video, so. Um, but that is another way of cleansing. So it, that is a 
an additional way of making sure that each room is cleansed and sealed. Um, okay, so now that we dealt with the use of cleansing, what else is it good for? It is actually very good for sanctifying um, a specific, uh, kind of like how we cleanse the scissors. It's good for sanctifying different objects. But also, if you are a pagan like myself and you have a little altar area, it's also good for sanctifying the altar and cleansing it. Now, um, if, like me, you have a wooden altar... I would probably place this in a plastic spray bottle. That's not going to diminish any of the energy or the cleansing properties that we have put in it, so do not fret. Especially because, you know, water wears away wood over time. So if uh, it can actually ruin the wood uh, and destroy it. So unless you want to destroy your altar... I would take like maybe a paper towel and just lightly go over it real quick and then just start cleansing. Uh, most people though use blessed and herbal oils to sanctify the, uh, the wood because oil is not as rough on wood as water. If you have an altar made of stone then obviously it doesn't matter but I don't think a lot of people have stone altars although wouldn't that be cool? Um, but the biggest property about this is cleansing. Now, you can also add in energy for healing as well. Yes, I have made my own healing water. Now, you can cleanse yourself. You can purify yourself. You can rub a little bit of this on you. Um the head, maybe, you know, on the arms and legs, uh, over your heart. Um, but I would not drink this because of the salt content. So if you were to make actual healing water, that is a different thing. You would just add the fresh water. I would not condone drinking outside water for this one, uh, distilled or purified. And you'd basically do the same thing with the prayer, and but this time you would put in the feelings of healing energy, and it does work. I did have quite a few cuts from work, and you know, I was in pain, and I did make these healing, uh, this healing water, and I drank it, and not only did the pain seem to subside, but it's like the healing process of the cuts was, you know, going along a lot faster. So, uh, a little bonus for this video, it's also good for healing. You can basically put whatever um, emotion or energy or thought form into this, whatever you need. Um, some people like to use crystals when they make charged water. Um, word of warning, not all crystals are meant to be put in water. Uh, for example, malachite, I heard, actually gives off fumes when it is moist, toxic fumes. So that would not be a good one to put in water at all. Now, there are some crystals that when placed in water, they start to erode and crumble. So if you're planning on drinking that, you're going to actually be ingesting sharp crystal parts, which are going to cut up your insides. So if I do make crystals, I don't drink crystal water. No. But what I do, <clears throat> I will place like... A piece of cardboard or something on top of the water make sure it's not touching the water so it don't sag and I will put the crystal on top and that way the energy just goes right into it um, <clears throat> or sometimes if it's in like a closed bottle like a squeeze bottle like ho really holy water comes in uh, I will place it on top of the crystals that way it like absorbs the energy so that is a better way I would definitely do your research if you're planning to ingest any kind of crystal water. 
Um, there's also Charged Moon Energy. Now, um, for those of you who are really into the pagan uh, religions like Wicca and stuff, you will probably be familiar with the moon phases and what they do. I, uh, I do want to study them, but I don't have any knowledge in moon phases. I don't base my rituals on the moon phases. Um, but I will sometimes pay attention when there's like a full moon out or like a super moon because I know those are really powerful. So basically all you do with moon water is you take it. You can add the lemon and the salt if you want. But what I would do, especially if it's the summertime, I'd put it in a corked uh, glass bottle or a bottle with a cap so that the moonlight can actually soak through it and that way bugs won't get in it and like ruin it and like cause the impurities that you worked so hard to get out of there. And you leave it out for about an hour or two, sometimes even longer, but just make sure that you take it in before the sun rises or else that just depletes the whole purpose <clears throat> all right guys um those are just the uh, the techniques and ways that you can use charged or homemade blessed water um thank you for watching if you have any comments questions or concerns put it down in the comment section down below and don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my new videos all right guys thank you so much for watching <laughs> bye bye now